Have you ever wanted to get more control over your WordPress website without the cost or constraints of cPanel? Today, we'll guide you step by step on installing WordPress on a VPS without cPanel. Let's dive in. In this video, I'm on a Linux machine Ubuntu that is but doesn't matter you can use a Mac or Windows machine since we installing on a remote server. First, make sure you have a VPS ready, with a fresh installation of an operating system like Ubuntu. We'll be using Ubuntu 22.04 for this tutorial. You can purchase a VPS on a number of VPS providers like Contabo or DigitalOcean. The links to these providers are in the video description. In this tutorial I'm going to use a Contabo VPS. Contabo is a popular VPS provider known for its competitive prices and robust performance. From the homepage, hover over or click on the VPS tab in the navigation menu. You'll see different VPS offers. Review the specifications and prices to determine which one best fits your needs. Once you've chosen a VPS plan, click on it. For this demonstration I will use the Contabo VPS small plan. Select how you're going to pay whether monthly, yearly and so on. Note that if you pay yearly it will be much cheaper and there will be no setup fee. Next, select the region. Make sure to select a region near where you live. This will improve the speed of your VPS since the traffic won't travel long distances. For the storage type you can choose either NVMe or SSD for your VPS instance. You can research more on the differences between the two types. I will go for the default one it will work just perfectly. In the image section choose Ubuntu 22.04. You can go for Ubuntu 20.04 if you want but for this tutorial I'm going for the latest version 22.04. Click on the Apps and Panel tab. Select LAMP. LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, and you'll need this stack to run WordPress. Next, enter the root password. This is the password you will use to access your VPS. Make sure you do not forget it. Leave everything else at the default and click Next. On the next window, enter your details. When done click on Next and make the purchase. When the setup of the Contabo VPS is done you will receive an email like this with your login details and other details as well. Take note of the details sent to you. When you log into your Contabo dashboard you will be presented with an interface like this one where you can manage your VPS servers. You can access your VPS with a tool like Putty. This tool can be installed on a Windows or Linux machine. Enter the IP address of your VPS and the port number which is usually port 22 for SSH. Click on Connect when done. Enter the username and password sent to you in the email to log in. You can start entering commands to configure your VPS from this window. Since I'm on a Linux machine I will use the terminal instead to First things first, update your system to ensure all packages are up to date. Run the following commands to update. This command fetches the package lists from the repositories and updates them to get information on the newest versions of packages and their dependencies. It ensures that your system knows about the latest versions of packages and their dependencies available in the repositories. It does not install or upgrade any software. This next command will upgrade all currently installed packages that have newer versions available in the repositories. Run this command to check the status of the Apache server. As you can see it is running perfectly. You can check the version of the MySQL installed by running this command. Log into MySQL by running this command. It will ask for a password. Enter the password of your root account or the password that was sent to your email. This SQL command creates a new database named WordPress. WordPress requires a database for it to function. You can give the database a different name if you want. This SQL command creates a new user for the MySQL or MariaDB database system who can only log in from the local machine where the database is hosted and assigns the specified password to that user.
This SQL command grants full permissions to the user's act on all tables in the WordPress database, specifies that this user can only log in from the local server, and sets, updates the user's password to the provided value. The grant all part of the command assigns all privileges to the specified user on a certain database and its tables. Executing flush privileges reloads the grant tables, ensuring that all recent changes to user privileges are recognized and applied by the database server. In simple terms, it's a way to tell the database server, hey, I've made some changes to who can access what. Please ensure you're up to date and enforce these changes now. Let us now install additional PHP extensions by running this command. The command is used to extend the capabilities of a PHP installation by adding various modules that enable specific functionalities. This is often done when setting up a web server to meet the requirements of specific web applications like WordPress, which might need these extensions to function correctly or to provide enhanced features. Restart the Apache web server by running this command. The command tells the system to stop the Apache web server and then immediately start it up again. Change the current directory to the HTML folder by running the above command. This command will download the latest version of WordPress from the official WordPress site and save it to your current directory. You can now extract the just downloaded WordPress zip file by running the following command. Let us now access the VPS using an FTP client. You can use an FTP client like FileZilla. If you are on a Windows machine, you can download and install a popular FTP client WinSCP. You can connect by entering the IP address of the VPS, username, password, and the port number. We are now connected, let us locate the HTML folder. Delete the zip file we downloaded earlier, we no longer need it. Move the extracted WordPress folder to the upper directory by dragging it. Rename the, the WordPress folder to HTML and the old HTML folder to something else. Now let us edit the wp-config file in the new HTML folder we just created. We only have a sample config file. Rename it first. The wp-config file in WordPress is one of the most crucial files in the entire installation. It acts as the bridge between the WordPress file system and the database, one of the primary purposes of the wp-config. PHP file is to store the database connection details. These credentials allow WordPress to connect to its database to retrieve and store content, settings, and other data. It's a central configuration file, and altering it should be done with caution. Always take a backup before making any changes to it.
After you done save the file by pressing Ctrl then X you will be prompted to save the changes you made to the file. Press Y to confirm changes made. Then hit enter. We're nearly finished. We must set up the Apache web server so we can access our site using our domain name. Connect to the VPS again using your FTP client. Navigate to the site's available directory. Before we continue make sure you have bought a domain. You can buy a domain from any domain provider. But myself I like buying them from Namecheap as they are cheap. After getting a domain name create in DNS records that is in a record and a CNAME record. The a record should point to the IP address of your VPS server. Let us now continue from where we left off. Create a new empty file and name it according to your domain name. After creating the file open it. The site's available directory on a system running the Apache web server commonly seen in Debian-based distributions like Ubuntu is used for storing individual configuration files for each virtual host. In Apache, you can host multiple websites on a single server. Each of these websites is termed a virtual host. The configurations for these virtual hosts like domain name, document root, specific logging details, and so on can be stored in separate files in the site's available directory. We forgot to change one line. Now run the following commands. This command will reload or restart the Apache server for the changes to take effect and for the new site configuration to be active. When you execute this command it creates symbolic links. Its purpose is to enable a specified module for the Apache web server. This command tells the system to stop the Apache web server and then immediately start it up again. This is useful, for example, after making changes to the Apache configuration or enabling new modules, to ensure those changes are loaded and applied. Time to set up some permissions on some folders. Run this command first. This command will recursively change the ownership of the HTML directory and all its contents to the www data user and group. This is commonly done to give the web server permission to write or modify files in the directory, such as for a content management system like WordPress to be able to upload or modify files. Next run the following commands to set the correct permissions on the WordPress directories and files. The command is setting the permissions of all directories under HTML folder such that the owner can read, write, and execute, the group can read and execute, and others cannot access the directories at all. Let us now retrieve the WordPress salts and keys from the WordPress API using the curl command. This will fetch the latest unique set of secret keys and salts which you can use in your config file. It's important to note. These are used to ensure better encryption of information stored in the user's cookies, and a unique set should be used for each WordPress installation. Remember, these keys and salts are sensitive and should be kept safe. They help improve the security of your WordPress website, so don't share them carelessly. Copy the files into a notepad so you can easily copy and paste them into the config file. If you are able to edit the config file by opening it from the FTP client application it will be much easier and faster especially on a Windows machine.
Open the config file and scroll down to the section where the keys are. Replace put your unique phrase here with the values you got from the curl command. Running WordPress on a virtual private server provides several advantages compared to shared hosting environments. VPS hosting means you have dedicated resources just for your website or applications. This includes CPU, RAM, and storage that won't be shared with other websites. This can lead to better performance, especially for resource-intensive sites. With a VPS, you have full root access. This means you can configure the server environment as you wish, installing any software or package you need. On a VPS, your environment is isolated. This means that potential vulnerabilities or malware on other sites won't affect your site. Moreover, you can implement custom security configurations and firewalls tailored to your needs. When done, save the file and close it. We are now done with configurations. Let us now open the site in a browser and finish the setup. Before we do that, let us see whether our DNS has propagated. DNS propagation refers to the time it takes for updates made to the domain name system to be distributed to all the DNS servers around the world. This time is necessary because DNS data is cached at various levels to reduce the load on the primary DNS servers and to speed up domain name resolution requests. When a change is made to a domain's DNS settings, like changing the IP address of a website like we did on the record, modifying MX records used for email services, or adding a subdomain, the update is not instantly reflected across all servers worldwide. Instead, the new information slowly updates across the network. In your web browser, navigate to your server's domain name or public IP address. Select your language and click on Continue. Then you will be prompted to supply your database credential. Enter them and continue. As your site grows, it's easier to scale on a VPS. You can easily add more resources or even move to a more powerful server. While most shared hosts offer Linux-based hosting, with a VPS, you can often choose your operating system, whether that's a specific version of Linux, Windows, or something else. For websites with a high volume of traffic or complex applications, a VPS can provide the necessary computational power. This results in faster page load times, better user experience, and can even help with SEO. With full control over your VPS, you can set up custom backup solutions, ensuring that your data is stored securely and can be recovered quickly in case of any issues. In conclusion, while a VPS might be overkill for a small personal blog or website, it becomes almost essential for medium to larger sites or those that experience spikes in traffic. It offers a combination of improved performance, security, and flexibility that shared hosting struggles to match. We are now done let us log into our WordPress backend. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech tutorials. Drop your questions in the comments and we'll do our best to help. Until next time.